Many of you are here today because you believe that law can be a powerful way to affect change. Some of you may also believe that the private sector is ill-equipped to address pressing social problems on its own. As a student of both law and business, I believe that both the public and the private sectors should be a part of the solution. My name is Lisa Maroney, and today I hope to illustrate this point using a case study that I hope many of us can relate to, Boston's burgeoning food truck scene. Now you might be wondering how I am in any way qualified to talk about food trucks. As I mentioned, I'm a student in a JDM EA program, and a lot of my year has looked a lot like this, the thick textbooks and highlighters of a first year law student. But I've also worked part time as a business analyst and food trucker for Bon Me, a Vietnamese fusion food truck based here in Boston. This is me working <laughs> on the truck. And through my work for Bon Me, I've seen firsthand how market forces and regulatory forces interact in Boston's food truck scene. The Boston Mobile Food Truck Ordinance was passed in 2011, and the law in many ways balances competing priorities. On the one hand, the law allows government to retain control over certain aspects of a food truck's operations. On the other hand, it leaves key decisions to the food truck owner. So broadly speaking, the law touches four aspects of the food truck ecosystem. The first, the number of trucks that's allowed to operate within that ecosystem, is left largely to the food truck owner in that the city imposes no cap on the number of permits it will issue. As for where trucks can park within the city, however, this is very heavily regulated. The city curates a list of parking spots that it makes available on public streets. And every year, those spots are lotteried off randomly to food truck owners. Inspections are also a government choice. There's health, safety, fire, emissions inspections that trucks must comply with. But then there's also a whole host of other decisions, such as what type of food to serve, whether to serve healthful menu items, and which spots to strategically buy for in the lottery that are left up to the food truck owner. And at the end of my talk, I'm gonna argue why some of those decisions could arguably be made more of a government choice than they are today. Now, food trucks are not a only Boston phenomenon. If you've been to New York City recently, you may have seen one of my favorite food trucks, the Van Leeuwen ice cream truck, uh, because New York City has a lot of food trucks. Ever since 1979, the city has made roughly 3,000 permits available to food trucks and food carts, um, and that's a pretty strict cap that the city sets. New York City, however, does not, unlike Boston, designate certain spots that are available to food trucks and instead trucks are left to fend for themselves so long as they comply with a huge number of rules that the city sets. Actually, actually introduces a lot of uncertainty um, to the food truck owner who's trying to comply with those rules. Los Angeles is the birthplace of the gourmet food truck with the Kogi taco truck. And in Los Angeles, unlike in New York City, there's neither a cap on the number of trucks nor is there a, num a cap on the number of parking spots. Los Angeles has actually seen such a boom in food trucks that trucks actually block out brick and mortar restaurants on city streets. And the city has tried to implement regulations after the fact to date, which have been unsuccessful. Austin, Texas, similar to Los Angeles, does not cap either the number of trucks nor the number of parking spots. Unlike in Los Angeles, however, uh, trucks in Austin have stabilized at a desirable number of trucks. In Boston, unlike in New York City, Los Angeles, and Austin, prior to the mobile food truck ordinance, uh, it was nearly impossible for trucks to flourish within the city. And that's because the city didn't make public spots on, spots on public streets available. As a result, there were only a handful of trucks that were successful, among them Momo Goose, Savory, and Clover, all of which had arrangements to park on private land. The Boston mobile food truck ordinance drastically changed this landscape. This is a map, uh, stars in yellow are where trucks are currently serving lunch in downtown Boston as we speak. For those of you without dinner plans, I highly recommend taking note of where Bon Me will be serving dinner tonight in Hopper Square. So the Boston Mobile Food Truck Ordinance is a great example of how legal reform can <coughs> stimulate small business to generate economic returns for the city of Boston. And I say that because I believe that food trucks such as Bon Me add value to the city of Boston. There are certain non-quantifiable benefits. Food trucks create more vibrant city streets. They build a foodie and an entrepreneurial culture that some believe is a necessary building block to a vibrant startup ecosystem within a city. 
Food trucks also represent an opportunity for Boston residents to start a business that has relatively low capital costs and therefore a relatively low barrier to entry. There are also quantifiable benefits in terms of job creation and rental and tax income that accrues to the city, all of which creates a net benefit for the city of Boston. But I don't intend for this talk to be overly congratulatory because I believe that now that the city has created this, this legal reform that has allowed trucks to flourish, some of that energy could be harnessed to address entrenched social problems within the city of Boston. And in particular, I think that food trucks stand poised to tackle two specific issues. The first is inequalities in access to high quality food. This is a map of the city of Boston. Areas shaded in orange are areas where residents live greater than half a mile from the closest supermarket. These are areas where residents may be more inclined to buy from a fast food establishment or from a local bodega where quality is lower and prices are higher. The second problem, of which I'm sure we're all aware, is childhood obesity, which is no less a problem in Massachusetts than it is elsewhere in the nation. Roughly 30% of youth in Massachusetts are either overweight or obese. Now, even if you agree that these problems exist, and I hope you do, you may still be wondering, OK, well, how do food trucks in any way stand poised to address these problems? Well, you may remember from earlier in my talk how I mentioned that the Boston Mobile Food Truck Ordinance places restrictions on where trucks can park and requires them to undergo inspections, but says little in the way of other requirements. And I think that there's opportunity here for the city to design smart rules that incentivize trucks to address those problems while still allowing the trucks to flourish. Here are a few ideas. One is that the city could incentivize trucks, perhaps through priority placement in the lottery, to uh, serve dinner one night per week in a low-income area, or to accept food stamps in addition to cash and credit card. Another idea is that the city could take proceeds from food truck permit fees and put them in a fund that provides helpful lunch for Boston Public School students. Another idea is to require each truck to partner with a nonprofit, um, perhaps for trucks to deliver leftover food to a food pantry at the end of the night. These are just a few ideas. I know that this list is not exhaustive, and I can only hope that Boston policymakers take these ideas and run with them. But I want to conclude with two thoughts that I hope this case study has illustrated. The first is that social change can take many different forms. It can be legal reform, such as the mobile food truck ordinance, or it could be businesses adapting to market pressures. It could be nonprofits, NGOs, IGOs. I'm sure that each one of us in this room will affect change in a different way. The second thought is that working for social change is a project that never is finished. Even if at some future point in your career, you're successful at pushing through an initiative, such as bringing food trucks to Boston, or whatever it is that you care about, I hope that you remember to think about how you can further address the issues that you care about by continuing to refine that initiative. That's my challenge to you. Thank you very much.